in his stand-up game with the ground game, with the wrestling, he's almost impossible to beat at welterweight. That's the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world. Now, I still think it's John Jones. I still think it's John Jones, but the, because the bottom line is, listen, I, listen, I, um, I got more respect for Masvidal than he does, but then again, I'm not a UFC fighter like he is, so you know what? His, his opinion is more qualified than mine. Plus, I'm not an expert like idiots out there try to accuse me of pretending that I'm being just because I'm commenting. No, I'm a fan. I'm not an expert. Benet has been a boxing fan, an MMA fan, from way back. When we used to do radio side by side, our shows were in New York. We used to see each other in the hallways all the time, and I just yeah. wanted to talk to him about basketball, and he just wanted to talk to me about the fight game. Uh, Maz Vidal went, which was absolutely devastating. What I would say to you, however, is this. Maz Vidal, pay attention to what he said after the fight, and he was class personified in a loss. What he said was, he showed me something I hadn't seen. My John Bones Jones go-to that it may not be Usman's fault. Maybe it's the level of competition. Maybe I need to see him against Covington again, okay? Mm -hmm. Maybe I need to see him, you know, uh, and we'll talk about this later. The out of science of the one Basically on John Bones' resume, and when you lost last time, I said, yep, that's still John and Jones. How, and the so multitude of ways we've seen him win as well. And you, can, and you can say that. That's legit. I'm talking about right now. I need, I need to see it from John Bones Jones yeah, at the top a while. of the There's heavyweight division where he's now campaigning. Last week, insulting the intelligence of 39 other world leaders, including our Prime Minister Scott Morrison, by making them listen to the ravings of a bizarre parade of alarmists and mystics. And it was amazing. Now, Biden called this summit last week to force countries like ours to slash their global warming gases even more, at whatever cost, money and jobs, while the world's biggest emitter. Now, what is so telling is that the speakers Biden invited to his great big two-day climate conference last week did not include one climate scientist. And I think the reason was pretty simple. It would have been too dangerous. Scientists might have told him that, whoops, the temperature of the planet has just dropped to below the average of the last decade of last century. And what's more, Stephen Coonan, who was the scientist, who was the US Undersecretary for Science, and bushfires are burning 25% less area than two decades ago. But that's just science. And the global warming scare is now about something completely different. It makes you instantly wise and holy. So world leaders were treated to a lecture of the latest far-left university babble. We demand comprehensive, non-Eurocentric and intersectional climate education in racism, ancestral and indigenous wisdom, on historical movements, disability justice, green careers, and sustainable living. Yes, ancestral and indigenous wisdom is needed to fix global warming. What did the Aztec gods of Mexico recommend to this, this girl's ancestors to cut the emissions? back when her ancestors were offering them human sacrifice to lead this global warming crusade. But most importantly, all of these solutions must be implemented with the voices of frontline black, brown and indigenous communities as leaders and decision makers. Yep, no way. It is outrageous that Biden served up that steaming nonsense to 39 world leaders. And she wasn't the only one he trotted out. There was also... Achana Sareng, a 25-year-old former student activist who identifies as a member of India's Karia tribe, me wise, even when she's prattling New Age eco bull and suggesting that we go back to the forests. Mass climate education incorporating indigenous worldview should be core to nature-based solution. And it went with this nonsense. President Biden also had an American Indian turn up to claim that Indians had centuries of timeless wisdom on how to confront climate change. I thought it was climate change was a new problem. And the leader of the Association for Indigenous Women... Now, look, let's be blunt. The time for, you know, polite applause for the poor person from Africa. I mean, we should look to the indigenous people of Chad for advice on how to power our advanced 21st century economies is in the lowest category of all human development. In fact, it's ranked 187 out of 189 countries and territories. Chad can't even run itself. 
But here with the world leaders, the advanced world, has the West gone barking mad, so lost confidence in its technical know-how and its culture? But with no scientists around, anyone could claim any wild thing. I mean, the of islands in each of those nations has either got larger or stayed very similar in size. So why was Biden insulting our intelligence with this utter nonsense? Live, and I, I know that, you know, there's marketing talk and whatever, get-ins are already selling out, which makes sense because this is essentially the most requested drop. But the emotionally exhausted line, I got these beautiful mint and peach pastel hoodies, an amazing and comfy sage crop top, the everyday shorts, the everyday sweats. Much, even though every drop gets bigger and bigger and more successful, still, the night before the release, I'm like, what if I've just been pranked by all these people for the past 12 to 15 years and no one's gonna support the drop? And then you'll actually broke the website for a little bit when it's hey, April 26, 2021, hit that like button. Definitely subscribe because a brand new subscriber at random will be getting $5,000 at the end of the month of April. Just my little way of giving back to the people that have given me so much, but let's just jump into it. And first up today in big entertainment slash entertainer slash standout for a number of reasons, right? One, we actually got to see mixed martial arts in front of a crowd, which just has a very special energy. Two, yeah, Joe, I no longer shoot my podcast inside of an alien spaceship Rogan going viral. Mainly because his reactions were so animated, though honestly, if you've seen that video, you know what I'm talking about. Three, we learned that if Capitol Police are worried about another insurrection, they should just go and hire Kamaru Usman. Cause this man has recently made a career out of knocking out Trump supporters. Which actually kind of takes us to four, you had Jake Paul making you also have the likes of Conor McGregor getting into the mix here, saying UFC high-level fighting is greater than blogger jackass boxing. We also got into a verbal confrontation with Daniel Cormier before they ended up having to be separated. We also saw what seems to be this kind of continuing war of words, only making it mostly about money, saying in my third fight, I made more in total pay than any fighter in UFC history. Maybe it's time to pay your fighters their fair share. With him also sharing a clip of Joe Rogan, who of course is a UFC commentator, praising both uh, Jake Paul and his brother Logan. Paul brothers, Logan and Jake, yeah, they're, they're making thing, some- right? People want to watch me get knocked out they're gonna buy something and that's how I'm gonna make money. Yeah, for now, on pretty much all fronts, we're gonna have to wait to see what happens next. Then, let's talk about this absolutely massive Josh news. If your name is not Josh, please skip ahead. Great, now that everyone that's not the biggest Josh news we've had in years. Right, so if you don't know, which would be shocking because you're all on the group text. Last year, a 22 year old Arizona college student by the name of Josh Swain was experiencing pandemic boredom. And so he's thinking to himself, why can I never get social media accounts with my name? Like there are and, and more than a thousand people showed up, 950 spectators and 50 people named Josh. Notably, of those other 50 Joshers that showed up, only one was the Swain variant, because I guess Swains are cowards. So uh, we ended up seeing two battles play out. One, you had the two Josh Swain will battle of pool noodles with a fight kind of being just fantastic to watch. And oh my God, the underdog winner showed up, four year old little Josh, AKA Josh. Vincent Jr. And if that somehow did not warm your stupid cold, as of today, more than 260 people have donated a little more than $12,000 to the foundation, with attendees also bringing more than 100 pounds of food that was donated to the Food Bank of Lincoln. So yeah, you know, sometimes it happens. One in nine shows, we get some nice news. And hey, now that you're feeling happy and anxiety to raise awareness for men's health issues and support families impacted by the disease. Right, Manscaped, in addition to providing the best tools for below the waist grooming and hygiene has made it their mission to spread the word, to do a home check on yourself once a month and to have regular doctor visits if you feel something's off. Package kit for all your grooming needs. Right now, save 20% off your Manscaped order plus free international shipping when you visit manscaped.com slash fill. Then in news that resulted in my accountant sending me a frowny face emoji this morning. Brian Dees, director of the National Income. Also noting that an ACA related investment tax would bring the federal toll to 43.4% for top earners. While this is absolutely massive news, it's very likely not going to impact you directly. With Dees noting that this change would only apply to three tenths of a percent of taxpayers, which is not even as is. Reportedly, the democratic sweet spot for this right now is actually closer to 30%, though that is still a pretty big jump. It's just smaller than Biden's current goal. So that is something that Joe Biden is actively trying to do, but uh, something that Joe Biden Biden is 
not trying to do, uh, even though we've, Ding. there's no desire, no effort, no press release, no policy paper, none of that, that would support the notion that the Biden administration is going to suggest that people eat less meat or that the USDA has some program designed to reduce meat consumption. It's simply not the case. With all of this, or at least a lot, now they're so trusted. With them putting out an article speculating that Biden's plan could do this, but uh, from what? Yes, it is widely believed that if a lot of us stopped eating meat and we had plant-based alternatives, that that would actually help with the environment. Or the Daily Mail citing a report that says a suggestion. I mean, granted, it not being true isn't gonna stop people like using it as a rallying cry or a fundraising tool, but it, the, the truth is the truth. I don't know, it's just all depressingly stupid at this point. Then, in absolutely massive US political news, we had the Supreme Court this morning is beyond the four walls of one's home. And notably here, not only has the Supreme Court turned down gun control, control cases, they have turned down New York specific gun control cases. And in a brief urging them to do the same again, New York's attorney general argued that the New York law was consistent with the 2008 ruling, and noting that in a 20, it will not just apply to New York. But according to gun rights groups, there are similar laws in California, Delaware, Hawaii, Maryland, Massachusetts, New Jersey, and Rhode Island. And so with this Supreme Court having a strong conservative majority, this decision could lead to a loosening of gun laws nationwide. But as far as what, I don't have the answer for a little bit. The court is currently not set to hear this case until their next term this October with them also not expected to issue a decision on it until next summer. Then, I mean, we have a whole slew of COVID-19 news. I don't even know where to start. But we're seeing things like in Spain, you had police arresting a 40 year old man of virus. But following this very long investigation, you had authorities saying that the man went to work despite having symptoms of COVID-19. With them also reportedly refusing to go home when colleagues expressed concerns about his symptoms. After work, he did, yes, get tested, but then he immediately went to the gym and then back to work the next on to infect several relatives, including three infants. But yeah, he was arrested and released the same day, he's awaiting trial, and we'll have to wait to see what happens there. Then, because what would a Philip DeFranco show be without a Florida man story, and even better, a Florida family story? And this today, because the Justice the Family for selling bleach is a, quote, miracle cure for COVID-19 and other illnesses. With prosecutors saying that 62-year-old Mark Renan peddled these deadly chemicals with his three sons, 34-year-old Jonathan, 26-year-old Jordan, and 32-year-old Joseph. Reportedly, they called this their miracle mineral solution. Matter is worse, their product is actually a chemical solution containing sodium chloride and water, which after ingestion becomes chlorine dioxide. Strong bleach used in industrial water treatments and in bleaching textiles, pulp, or paper. Or you had the FDA warning last year that their products could cause dangerous side effects. A member charged with one count of conspiracy to commit fraud and two counts of criminal contempt. And with all of this, the Grenons face up to life imprisonment if found guilty. Then in, I don't know what it's gonna do to this video, but we should definitely talk about it news. Let's talk about India and social media. It's so the expressed anger at India's leaders. And so understandably what we're seeing right now, it's raising concerns about the relationship between social media companies and leaders in countries that compose major client bases. I mean, how many times have we seen companies that stand for things and then they just bend the knee for some ridiculous oppressive thing in a country? It tells you a lot that it all lines up with Fox News segments about California from the last year. Nothing about inequality, big tech, housing, you know, all these structural things that Californians are pretty pissed off about. In other words, the problem with Caitlyn Jenner is this. It's actually like the worst of all worlds. Yeah, it is the worst of all worlds, that right? you're the outsider. Celebrity who's Paul Ryan stand. So you're an outsider. You have a chance to do yeah. something different, yes. but now we're just going to toe the line. Right. I'm not even corrupt or bought off. I'm just doing it because I want to, <laughs> right? Like, that's actually... And one of the things that they think, say about it is that, you know, it's been a shit year, and the guy's happy, and he's going out to eat, and the way he behaves... I like that. That's it. I mean, that's actually at the base how a lot of people vote. Yes. And that's just not something that you learn to do in your watershed. And look, if McConaughey runs, it's another great test. I could be completely wrong. I have no idea. But I'm the longer you look at this and you look at political sectarianism, and I just look, I have faith that people are not, nat I don't think their natural disposition is hatred. I think that everybody wants to. Disinfecting the dead. The fear of infection remains even when life has passed. Makeshift cremation sites like relatives feel helpless as the coronavirus tears through the capital. I have money, I have everything, but I can't save my sister. Because no bed, nothing, nothing like that. No gas, 
No. Yeah, and, and, and the coronavirus cases um, have hit a global record peak uh, for a fifth straight day. The number is 353,000. I'll just point out that that's well over 300,000 more cases than the next highest country. The out of vaccines, Christine, is for everybody above the age of 18. So this is going to be a massive demand. Already some steps have been taken to increase output. The approval of other foreign vaccines has been ramped up. Already Russia, Sputnik has been approved health policy in Bhopal, India. Good to have you on the program, Doctor. Just last month, uh, the health minister said that India was in the, quote, end game of the pandemic. Today, the country is hitting global records in infections. What's gone wrong in your mutations were not the cause? Yeah, thank you for having me. So when I did, uh, when I put in that tweet, what I meant was that, of course, uh, variants and mutations could be uh, a driver in many ways, but what one has to recognize. 印度非常惊人的一个数字哦，呃，这是一个曲线图。那这个曲线图呢，从疫情爆发开始一直到现在。大家都知道，在二零二零年年中左右，曾经有一度是全世界的疫情大爆发。你看看，那个时候来到。好，那现在印度的状况非常的严重，所以好多国家呢都立刻要跟印度断航，不能再跟他有任何的一个这个交通的往来。我们来看到，包括加拿大，加拿大从四月二十二号开始要断航三十天的上槽，前往新加坡等盟国取样，美英法德也相继提供必要物资。We're sending out an emergency shipment of over six hundred items of equipment: their ventilators, oxygen concentrators, and the aim.